In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Ultimate PXE Boot server at home. Whether it's for home lab or enterprise environment, with this one solution, you can say goodbye to dealing with USB bootable devices or ISO files. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I have prepared here a Rocky 9.3 VM that we're going to use as our host. To be able to install Netboot XYZ, we're going to use Docker. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect via SSH to our VM and we're going to install Docker. So we're going to do SSH root at... Now, this is the IP of the VM, like with the root password. So we're here on our VM. Now, we're going to install the Docker repo. First, we need some prerequisites like yum utilities. Okay, so that's installed. Okay, so now we're going to install the actual repo and now we're going to install docker on all its dependencies okay we're gonna say yes to this just wait for it to install we're gonna say yes to this okay so docker is installed so now we need to make sure that the service is enabled and started to do that we're going to use systemctl enable docker and now we're going to do start start docker all right we're going to check the status make sure everything is good all right so now we're going to create a folder where we're going to put all our netboot XYZ files. So the location that I choose for this is on slash OPT. And then we're going to create mkdir to create a new folder. And it's going to be called Docker. And inside Docker, we're going to create mkdir folder netboot. Here we're going to go into the netboot folder. So if we print our directory, we are in slash opt slash docker slash netboot. Okay, so here now we're going to create our docker compose file. But first we need to install vim. So dnf install vim real quickly. Say yes to that. Our favorite text editor. Now we're going to do vim docker compose dot yml. Okay, so now I'm going to paste the docker compose configuration. I'm going to do escape colon set paste and then I'm going to do i to insert and then paste. So here we're using the netboot xyz docker container from linux server.io. Linux server.io they have really good docker images and I like to use them for most of my home lab. Here we're specifying version 0.7.0-ls139. I like to pin all my versions because I like to follow the release notes and know if it's a stable release or not before updating. Here you have a couple of things that you need to configure. So we're going to configure the time zone. So we're going to go up here and then we're going to change this to a America, Toronto. Now for the PUID and the PGID here, you can create a new user and run it as a non-root user. In this case, I'm going to run it as a root user. Most of the containers work as root. It's not recommended, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I think it's going to be fast. Okay, so menu version. I chose this menu version also with the same logic as the version of the container where I am pinning the version so that I can have a stable releases and avoid updating to a different version and maybe something's going to break. This combination of menu version and container version actually works very good for me. If you want to run the latest, you can change these settings here. Port range, subfolder, we don't need to change anything. Here, we're just mapping a couple of folders like the configuration and the assets and the ports that are going to be open on our firewall by the Docker daemon is port 3000, port 69, and port 8080 for our web interface. So with all this configured and set up, uh, also here you can change the container name if you want to name it a, a different thing. So now we're going to do escape colon write and quit to save all our changes. And right now we're ready to run our Docker container of netboot XYZ. For that, we're going to do Docker compose up and dash D so that it runs as a daemon in the background and enter. So this is going to automatically pull the image and create the container. To confirm that the container is up and running, we're going to do a Docker PS. All right, it looks like it's up. And now we're going to go to our browser to see the web interface. So this is the web interface of Netboot XYZ. One of the things that I love about Netboot.xyz is that it actually has a web interface and we can manage a lot of the PXC environment from here. So I'll just give you a rundown of the web interface. But at this point, there's nothing that you really need to change to actually start using Netboot XYZ. And here on the menu tab, there's a bunch of IPXC configurations and there's also the boot configuration and there's a bunch of files here. If you want to look at the boot.cfg file, you can see here that this is all the configuration for all our different distributions. For example, we have CentOS, we have Debian, we have Duvan, we have Fedora, FreeDOS, etc. This will be the place where you would want to change the configuration if you want to do something custom or anything like that. So we're going to leave everything as default as it is, and we're going to try to boot from this PXC server. To be able to boot from a PXC server, you need to have access to your DHCP server. This could be your home router. This could be a Unify uh, security gateway. This can be a Windows Server DHCP server. Here, I'm going to show you how 
to configure it for Unify Security Gateway, which is my firewall, and also for Windows DHCP server. First, we're going to start with the Unify version. I'm going to log in into my Unify Security Gateway. Okay, now that I'm here, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to network. Here I have a couple of networks, which is like are my primary home network. So I'm going to start with my primary default network. Well, select that one and then go down and then click on DHCP service management. And then here, as you can see, there's an option called network boot. Here's where we're going to put the IP of our VM in this case, the VM is 117. So this is the file that you need to specify if you want to boot from UEFI. There are some utilities here on on Netboot XYZ that actually only work on regular uh, legacy boot. And if you want to use the legacy boot, there's another file that you need to configure here. So the other file for legacy boot, you have the Netboot XYZ.IEFI and you also have the Netboot XYZ.KPXE. After that is done, then you only need to do is apply changes and this is going to provision your usg you just need to wait a little bit and your firewall will be updated your dhcp server will be updated now i'm going to show you how to do this on windows so i have prepared here a small windows server vm and i have the windows dhcp server running so as usual on windows server you just go to your dhcp you go to the scope or the network where you want to configure pxe then you go to scope options and then you right click configure options and then you're going to scroll down until you find options 66 and 67 okay so option 66 is the boot server host name in this case is going to be the ip of the machine so plus zero dot 117 you're going to apply and for the boot file name is going to be netboot.xyz.efi and that's about it you click on apply and then you click on OK. And that's how you configure the PXC server on a Windows DHCP. With that configured on your DHCP server, whether it's Windows or whether it's Unify or any other like that, now we should be able to boot from the PXC server. After configuring all your DHCP options on your server, whether it was your Windows or Unify or something else, now it's time to boot from the network. So here I have prepared a VM that is connected to the network that I'm using uh, for the DHCP. And I'm going to go to the boot manager and I'm going to boot from the UEFI PXC IPv4. And as you can see here, we have the Netboot XYZ boot menu loading. This is the PXC boot menu from Netboot XYZ. So as you can see here, there's like many, many cool things that we can look at. For example, we have Linux network ins installers. So if we go through the list, we have Alma Linux, Alpine Linux, Arc Linux, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Gene2, Kali Linux. We have OpenSUSE, we have Oracle, we have Red Hat Enterprise, we have VMware. All of these are network installs. All of the actual assets are in the cloud so it's going to connect to the latest versions of these distributions if we hit escape and then we go back we also have live cds live cds are like compact linux distributions that you can actually test before installing it this is also very handy if you need to do any troubleshooting on a linux system you can boot from a live cd and maybe recover a, a hard drive or maybe try to fix some configuration files you also have windows the configuration for windows is a little bit more advanced it's a little bit out of the scope for this tutorial but you can also boot and create a specific custom winboot preboot environments with netboot xyz which is really cool we also have utilities so this is also a cool thing from netboot we have boot repair we have clonezilla we have gparted we have RescueZilla. There are many, many utilities that we can use to troubleshoot a lot of our environments. So now let's try to install Rocket Linux or any Red Hat uh, distribution. This is my favorite Linux distribution. So let's go for Rocky Linux. I believe Rocky is in the list here. There you go. So Rocky Linux. We're going to try Rocky Linux. As you can see here, we have Rocky Linux 8 and Rocky Linux 9. Before we boot, I want to show you quickly what I mean when I say that is using the latest versions of the distributions. As you can see here on the boot.cfg configuration file, if we go to the configuration for Rocky Linux, you can see that it's set to Rocky Linux Mirror. So it's HTTP download Rocky Linux.org and it's using the pub slash Rocky. The installer is actually loading from the official Rocky Linux repos. And so this means that it's going to always pick up the latest version. So if you want to control the versioning for your Rocky Linux distribution, so if you want to specify Rocky Linux 8.3 or 9.0 or 9.1 or something like that, you want to lock in your version, then you need to change the URL else that is using here to match the, the the version that you want in this case you would have to use the rocky linux vault repositories for this now let's boot from uh, the network we have here our vm we're going to do rocky linux 9 latest and we're going to hit enter so it gives you a couple of options here which is really cool you can do a graphical installer
controller or you can do a text or you can do just do a rescue disk for Rocky Linux 9 and you can also set your own kickstart. So here you can set a kickstart that can be hosted anywhere in a web server or it can even be hosted on the same netboot XYZ server. Remember that I showed you before that you could go to the netboot server here and if you go to 8080 this is already a web server that you can use to store many files. Uh, in this case a kickstart would work here. So let's do a basic graphic install and as you can see it's downloading from pop rocky 9 base os x86 os images pxc boot vm linux so right now it's pulling the init ram fs and the linux kernel for the installer this is pulling it directly from the official repo and now anaconda the installer for rocky linux is loading because this is pulling everything from the network it sometimes can take a little bit longer for everything to load you just have to wait a little bit for everything to download and you will be good to go so as you can see here welcome to rocky linux 9.3 this is the anaconda installer it has been loaded from the network i'm just going to go really quickly through the installation so that you can see See how it behaves. So I'm just going to go to continue. So as you can see here in the installation source, it's looking at HTTP download.rocky Linux. So it's actually looking at the official repo. From here on, you could do a regular installation. You put your passwords and you create your partitions and, and it will go ahead and install Rocky Linux for you. Let's restart this machine and let's choose another distribution to log into. Okay, so we're back at the menu again. So let's try a second distribution. I'm going to choose Linux network installs and I'm going to try Debian. Debian is uh, my second favorite Linux distribution. We're going to go for the latest version, uh, version 12 bookworm, and we're going to do a graphical base install. This is also going to pull everything from the network. Okay, so it's loading now. Okay, and as you can see, we have the Debian 12 installer right here. This will be similar to the Rocky 9 installation where it's going to do a net installation. It's going to pull everything from Debian official repos. So now that we know how to boot from the network, let's go and download these assets locally so that we can boot locally from our server. Okay, so we have our web UI back here and now we're going to click on local assets. Here, as you can see, we have a bunch of distributions here that we can just pull. I'm going to look for Debian. Okay, so we have Debian 12 and I'm going to choose all of the Debian 12 distributions. So all the 12 version of Debian and we're going to go up here and we're going to click on pull selected. So that is going to go ahead and download all the assets from those distributions locally into your netboot server, the one we set up previously in Docker. And the only thing that you need to change now is we need to go to menus and we need to go to boot CFG and we need to change our endpoint. So as you can see here, the location of the live assets, which is the end, the live endpoint, it's set to github.com slash netboot xyz. Okay, so we need to put here the our server, which is http dash dash 182 168.0.117 and of course 8080 and we're going to click on save config perfect it's going to generate a new boot cfg custom here which is the one that it's going to use and i'm going to go ahead and start our vm so that it starts to boot we're going to see how it loads everything from our local server instead of from the cloud the only thing you need to take into consideration is that once you change your live endpoint everything is going to try to download all the assets from the local server this, this means that if you try to to boot from another distribution that is not down locally downloaded onto your server is going to fail because by default now it's looking to the local server. So just keep that in mind. If you change your live endpoint, it's going to look for everything in there. Okay, so all the assets have downloaded successfully to our local server and we're back here at the menu. So now let's try one of the live CDs. I want to try Debian Live and I'm going to go for version 12, which is what we downloaded. And I'm going to try GNOME. Well, as you can see here, it's pulling from our local server. I don't know. It, it was a little bit quickly, but you, you could see that the IP was there. It still goes ahead and downloads from the network, but because it's the local server, it's a lot faster and it's going now to load everything for the live CD of GNOME. So this is also like a very handy stuff where like you can just pre-download everything and load everything locally from the server and it's going to be a lot faster. Okay, so now as you can see, we have Debian 12 here, fully loaded, live CD. It all booted from the network. Isn't this great? You can just go ahead and like boot any of the available Linux distributions there and then just fully use it for a while and uh, try it out and maybe you like it maybe you don't and then you just turn off the vm turn off the computer and you're back to normal you didn't erase anything so this is also really good if you want to try out new distributions that you haven't used before and then just get a feeling of how they handle if you've been enjoying this video and if you if you like it just give it a thumbs up and make sure to share this with your friends i'm just gonna do one last one to boot something else 
other than a Linux distribution. So I'm going to try to boot to one of the utilities and see how that works. So I'm just going to shut down this VM right now. Okay, so we're back on the menu and now we're going to try some utilities. So why don't we try Gparted? I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. Okay, so it's looking at the GitHub repository again because I switched it in the boot configuration and now everything is loading up. Okay, so now as you can see, we have Gparted loaded directly from the network. So now you can go ahead and do all your partitions and all that stuff. So this is the cool thing about Netboot XYZ that is not only Linux distributions, uh, you can also do Windows, but there's also like really quick utilities that actually are really good for troubleshooting. All right, that's all I have for today. Don't forget to subscribe and comment and I'll see you on the next one.